Senior Infrastructure Advisor, Martin Chavez. Thank you so much for being with us today. Well, certainly, and it's senior because I'm now old. <laughs> Nonsense. It's all, it's all uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. President Biden signed, back in November, the $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill, and then Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham appointed you uh, to be in charge of spending some of this money. She said her top three priorities would be broadband, transportation, and water systems. And you are um, mostly over this sort of rid roads and bridges stuff, but also overseeing a little bit of the broadband and, uh, and water stuff. It's been a few months. Um, are there specifics coming into focus in terms of what we're doing with this money? Things that are getting the green light, looking like they're about to happen? There are uh, two pots of money. Uh, the ARPA monies, American Rescue Plan Act, uh, which we received $1.1 billion. We had a little hiccup along the way. The Supreme Court decided, uh, ruled that the legislature had to appropriate, so the governor had a special session. They appropriated about half of it, and then they f completed the rest of it two weeks ago in the regular session. Uh, that's very broad money, uh, but it's divvied up about uh, a whole lot into broadband. At the end of the day, it's going to be about a billion dollars in broadband between the two buckets of money. Uh, a lot of work on roads, a lot of water system work, uh, and then also part of my portfolio is transition, energy transition as we start to move to a, a lower carbon footprint. Uh, and then uh, part of that includes building resilience, mm -hmm. you know, sealing envelopes and things of that nature so you can capture the, the heat and not release it into the atmosphere. Uh, New Mexico has something like 200 bridges and almost 4,000 miles of highway that are in poor condition. This is something that we gripe about every day. People at home are thinking, which of these roads is getting fixed? Is it the crummy bridge that I have to drive over every day? How can people find out what's getting approved? Well, very shortly, uh, we will have a dashboard. We've been working on it for two months now, team of developers. Uh, it's going to be, you'll be able to track the federal dollars from their source in Washington down to when they got appropriated by the legislature and then to what departments it goes to and then what uh, programs the department's going to put them into. And let's take streets, for example. Uh, let's say they decided to do uh, Pinon Hills in Farmington. That's a long-awaited project and that was funded. Uh, what's the process for letting the contract, who gets the contract, what their timelines are. You'll be able to track and see, is it on track? Uh, so it's, it's a tremendous tool for policymakers, but also it's a transparency tool for the public. This is exactly where your money's being spent. Uh, and, and as you know, what most people really don't understand governmental finance. Half the people in government don't understand <laughs> governmental <laughs> finance. Uh, but it's complicated, and it's not a matter of just saying the president's signing a bill and all of a sudden, whoop, there's the money right there because it is the public's money and there's their accountability issues. Do we know what that website is yet? Well, it will be part, initially it's going to be part of the Department of Finance Administration. We want to migrate it over to the governor's office because that's an easier place for the public to go. Uh, and uh, uh, I've been working on the backroom development uh, and we're excited about it. All right. It, uh, dams. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says close to half of the state's 500 dams are in rough shape and a third of them could fail, uh, putting lives in danger downstream. Uh, you've said the priority is for shovel-ready projects. Um, how many dam projects are shovel-ready? I can't tell you exactly how many, uh, except that they're prioritized based on safety. Uh, and I can also tell you this, unfortunately, for all the money that's coming into New Mexico, it's not going to be enough. It just isn't going to be enough, but it's more than we've ever had before. And so uh, spending it wisely, effectively, is, is really a, a number one priority for the governor and everybody on her team. Uh, but we have a dam that nearly failed down in Doniana County. That's funded now. Uh, and they're already starting to work at, at where you find the contractors, which is going to be another issue in getting this money out the door, and that's capacity, because there aren't enough contractors. Not, we're almost at full employment in New Mexico. And when you add $3.7 billion worth of the spending, where are the electricians and the plumbers and the engineers? Well, everybody uh, who's trying to redo a bathroom right now feels the state's pain. There you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on adding one right now. Unfortunately, I can't spend any of this money on it. Ah, <laughs> good. We'll follow up on <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, really. Big picture timeline here. How long is it going to take to get this money in our bank account and get it back out? It will take uh, between one month 
uh, in five years, depending on the program. The ARPA monies are pretty much ready to go. You'll start to see unveiling of EV chargers, electric vehicle chargers. The president was very committed to make sure you could drive from one end of the country to the other uh, with electrical vehicles. Uh, right now in New Mexico, you can go pretty well east to west. North to south is a problem. You may have to stop overnight and charge for eight hours uh, to get there. And so they'll be deployed initially along the interstates, which are also designated as green corridor, green fuel corridors. Uh, I-10 down south, and then we'll start branching out. Ultimately, the goal is to have a, everyone living within 50 miles of an EV charger. And as most people know, most cars are going to get charged at home. That's, that's really the future. But if you've got to drive, to, if you have to drive to Las Vegas, New Mexico, or wherever it may be, uh, you need to be able to charge along the way. Mm -hmm. In January, the governor asked city and county leaders about their infrastructure priorities. What are local politicians telling you they want? Well, we started out, particularly with the ARPA monies, because they're not as well designated. They're, they're broad categories of, of spending, which if you're in the government business, you want as, as much freedom and discretion as you, as you have. Uh, we want to do big things. After the Supreme Court decision, the uh, legislature was required to appropriate, uh, and they basically just mix that into the small uh, traditional capital outlay projects. The pocket park here, the swimming, s the swimming pool over here in my district. Uh, and so the, the priorities are, are pretty simple. They're, I want a good road. And if you're in rural New Mexico, I want my kids to be able to get on the internet uh, to do their schoolwork or apply for jobs. Uh, and that really is going to be, of all these monies, from my perspective, the most transformational is going to be wiring New Mexico. Is there any conflict between what you're hearing um, from uh, mayors and county commissions and the priorities that the governor has set? Conflicts between mayors and county officials and governors? It couldn't happen in New Mexico. Sure, it, it's all, it's, it's, it, thus far it's collegial, uh, it's competitive, uh, and uh, we invite that competition. Uh, because we think the, the better projects rise to the top in that process. But sure, uh, there's more demand than there are resources, and so there's going to be competition. So who makes the decisions? You're the, you know, infrastructure czar, but is that a, a real fiefdom, or what's the process? Who makes the decisions? Who ranks the projects? What are the criteria? Boy, I wish it was a fiefdom, <laughs> don't we all? Uh, no, governor is the, the decider-in-chief, as they say. Uh, and uh, my job is to give her advice and also to help construct a process to get this money out the door. I think that's one of the reasons she looked to me, and we've been friends for a long time, adversaries from time to time, uh, but, but always friends. And uh, I think during my tenure as mayor, we got a lot done. We got money out the door and built things, and that's what she wants to see done with this. She wants to, it's not doing anybody but the banks any good sitting in the bank. She said, the governor said that we were getting enough money out of the bipartisan infrastructure bill, $3.7 billion, in order to benefit all communities. How are you making sure that smaller rural areas benefit as much as Albuquerque? Well, uh, part of the guidance from the Biden administration uh, centers around uh, equity. Uh, this has to be fair, has to be fairly distributed. Uh, f for example, if you look at the way electrical vehicle chargers have been distributed thus far around the state, South Valley, none. Southeast Heights, except for Manzano Mesa, which kind of services the Four Hills area, none. Go to the west side of the state, go out onto tribal land, nothing. That's not equitable. Uh, and that's where you're going to find my presence uh, very heavily. We're going to make sure that it benefits all New Mexicans. And that's one of the things the governor is very committed to. And uh, she used a lot of her ARPA monies this past uh, session uh, for housing, uh, particularly for affordable housing and, and, and assistance for people on their, on their uh, money down to buy their housing. So uh, this is going uh, where it's needed. You're a Democrat. The governor True. is a Democrat. True. You've individually got a lot of power here. If I'm a Republican sitting in Hobbs or Clovis, how am I reassured that I'm not going to get, you know, that my town isn't going to get penalized because we vote Republican? Just wait. <laughs> uh, when you see the road monies uh, in New Mexico, you're going to see them in the oil patch. Uh, and it was unfortunate that the congresswoman from southern New Mexico voted against both ARPA uh, and, and, you know, against all of the infrastructure uh, spending. But uh, we don't penalize constituents because of the errors in judgment of their other elected officials. It's all New Mexico. And we're going to be able to check up on that in the website that's coming online soon, where we'll be able to track all of these projects. Is that right? 
Exactly, and and it will take time. I mean, we're, you know, the legislature just made decisions two weeks ago. That money has to be uh, budgeted. It needs to be accounted for. Then you need to let contracts. Uh, and you stumble on all these issues of a capacity we talked about. So it will take time. And some of the federal monies uh, under, under the BIL, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, are programmed to take five years. The money is spread over a five-year period. So when people go online, they'll see the beginnings of it, uh, but as it develops, it'll become much more uh, texturized, if you will. So if I'm out there in Vanderwagen or Mora, and I'm like, hey, we really need this, flood project or this dam or whatever, how do I say, hey, please pay attention to my project? How do I get that to you? Well, they can contact me through the governor's office. We always recommend that people uh, well, contact the governor directly. She wants to hear from New Mexicans. And now that we seem to be exiting this pandemic, uh, she really likes to get out around the state and she's already traveling. Uh, so hit her up directly, go to reception and say, hey, governor, what about this? Uh, and then also to the legislators. Uh, we work uh, as best as could be worked with the, the, the legislature in this last session. It's really difficult when the building's closed off, everyone's masked, and, and you have all these protocols. It is what it is, uh, but we're starting to go beyond that, and so start talking. There's a reason the squeaky wheel uh, gets the oil. It needs it. Well, all right, we'll <laughs> put some contact information up on the website and encourage people to reach out. Thank you so much for being with us today. Sure, it's going to be fun.